And there were some things in this commentary, guys, that you should be offended by as women. It was so sexist, and they don't even know it. It was good versus evil in that game today. Evil? Called us dirty debutantes? Take your phone out right now and Google dirty debutantes and tell me what it says. Dirty debutantes? Are you kidding me? I'm not going to let you talk about 18 to 21 year old kids in that tone. It was even sexist for this reporter to say UCLA was milk and cookies. Now you women sit there and you keep your mouth shut if you want. I'm in the last third of my career, but I'm not going to let sexism continue. And if you don't think that's sexism, then you're in, in denial. We do have a lot of black women on this team. Um, we do have a, a lot of people that are from different areas. And unfortunately, you know, that, that bias does exist still today. And a lot of the people that are making those comments are being racist um, towards my teammates. And, um, you know, I'm in a unique situation where um, I see it with myself, you know, I'll talk trash and I'll get a different reaction than if Angel talks trash. And so it, it's really up to me to, you know, uh, it's not up to me, but I have a duty to my teammates um, to have their back um, and obviously you know some of the words that were used in that article were very sad and upsetting and that type of description of us isn't always motivating I think you know um, calling us basically the dirty debutantes like that's that's that has nothing to do with sports Mike, you called her. Uh, you called her a star uh, a few minutes ago. Talking about Kim Mulkey, LSU head coach. She is a star, and whether you are a Kim Mulkey fan or not, you always show up to hear what she's gonna say, to see what she's gonna wear, uh, just to be a, be in the midst of a conversation that she's gonna start. It's gonna be a provocative conversation more often than not, uh, and sometimes she raises some points that. We disagree with and in some cases like here when she was talking about the LA Times report. I agree with her completely yeah. uh, The and article you're right, you're right. Yeah, yeah, like really, exactly All she right. got it right on that. She was totally right yeah. on the LA Times article um, and, and we'll talk offline Mike uh, when I first saw it. Uh, I wonder if you <laughs> Not shame on me though shame on me because now I'm gonna get myself in trouble But when I first saw the article I'll say I put it this way when I first saw the article and I saw mm. the quotes from it. I said, Ugh, okay, I think I may know who did this. It was not the person I thought of. So, okay, oh, okay. it was not the okay. person I thought wrote it, but it okay. was, it was silly. It was not written. It was not informative. Uh, and this is somebody who covers UCLA. Ben Bowles, he covers UCLA, he used to cover the Clippers. Uh, he's been yeah. covering sports for a long time. He's old enough to know better. So it didn't, it doesn't read like someone who was really invested in the beat. It is just so, um, uh, it, it was just so, actually, actually I was, not really. Uh, well, well, you thought it was real quick. Just I too invested. I thought it read. It was like, it was, it was, it read like somebody who, first of all, it okay. read like it had a local, it had a local tone Fan. for a national paper. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it, yeah, like, yeah. Was it for you trying to rob a little too, rah, rah. Like, a little, little too, like a little too much of a Homer, you know, uh, yeah. a little too. Yeah. It felt, he felt too invested uh, in this game and as opposed to being an object, an objective, unbiased uh, reporter. He was so trolling. She was right. Felt like somebody that. on Twitter what? felt like somebody on Twitter got a chance to write for the LA times. You know, <laughs> exactly. Just kind of took times, over, man. Yeah, which is so the real LA villain times. in this, by the way. R the real villain in this is the LA Times. But continue. So, well, the LA Times, Kim Mulkey is right about. We'll get to the Washington Post in a second, but I do. Before we get to the Washington Post, I want to get your reaction to this because I feel like the Van Lith comments that we just heard there, where she says, "Look, we got a lot of black women on this team. I do some stuff." I do some stuff. I talk trash and it has a different reaction than when they do sure. it. Absolutely. Uh, hey, listen, thank you. Thank you. And 
and this is what I, this is what this is what being a great teammate is all about. Sometimes we need accomplices, when you not are, allies. When, that's a, that's an okay, accomplice, look, look, not look. an ally. <laughs> hey, look. Now I'm just telling you from my experience at being a black person in this country. Sometimes you want other people to notice the obvious. Sure. Like don't don't keep turning around looking at me saying, "Hey, what what you think about?" It? No, what you think about it? What do you think about it? It is, my 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 blackness does not mean that I comment that I exclusively comment on these issues that I know you see, that I know you hear. So We've talked thank about you. this for years. I am so thank tired of being somebody's up. phone call for a racial conversation. Yeah. Like like that's that, for the longest time. That's what we were. It's like shit. We got to talk about black shit. Hey, hey Michael, you free? You free? You busy? Like none hey, of you can not have a, 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 a yeah. intelligent conversation about race, which is which you is why we keep me. having the same conversation because we don't want to. You don't it. call me any other. You don't call me any other <laughs> right, time. Right. Just want to call about that. Hey man, right. when I like before I before I left, uh, the, I did sports radio as you know. I did sports radio for 13 years in mm -hmm. Boston, and before I left. Like the last my last month there, somebody said something which caused everybody, everybody uh, to go to uh, sensitivity training, racial sensitivity training, everybody. Mm -hmm. OK, now I could have taken the, the I'm, I'm just going to be honest with you. I knew I was leaving when somebody said something they shouldn't have said. I already had yeah. my next gig lined up. I knew I was going to go. So I was like, I could just ignore this. Or I can go for the entertainment. So I went for the entertainment. I chose to go for the entertainment. So during this yeah. during this sensitivity training, um, a lot of people there, a lot of white folks there, honestly, mm -hmm. were upset that they were in sensitivity training. They were upset that they were t they had to think about diversity and inclusion and all this. Stuff. They were just they were angry about it. And they were like, what, what, what do you mean we're not, we're diverse? And I didn't say a word. One of my colleagues, one of my white colleagues stood up. I was proud of him. He stood up and said, why are you guys so angry? Diversity? I see Michael Holly and the rest of us. <laughs> we're not diverse <laughs> at all. <laughs> so what y'all talking about? Right. Thank you. Thank you. My work here is done. I appreciate you. But no, really, uh, Van Lith, good stuff. <coughs> Everybody, you're not the only one who sees it, but I'll give you props for being the one who sees it and who speaks it. You articulated, you articulated it very well, very accurate. Mm. Uh, I'm sure your teammates, your teammates appreciate it. And I can tell you from afar, I've never met the young woman, but I appreciate it too. Now, I don't know to you remember. take over on the, uh, you can add anything well, to it, or maybe you want to get to the Washington well, Post. Well, I'll get to that, but I was talking, I was just referencing how, you know, uh, oftentimes, you know, white executives or producers would look to us to carry the racial conversation, or even white, or white hosts who are uncomfortable talking about race. Or, and, and, it, and it wasn't, sometimes it was from a place of sincerity, and, and, a, and a place, and, and I'll be fair, it was from, it, it sometimes it was from a place of sincerity or a place of, um, of, of understanding that you know that they didn't know, like like if like your guy who said diversity is Michael Holly and the rest of us. Some people felt like hey I can't have a conversation about race. I'm not black. I can't relate. I don't understand. Right? Okay, but the only way the conversation is ever going to evolve is if white people lead those conversations. And, and I'm not saying anything new or groundbreaking. This has been said. Um, and so it often frustrated me, us, having to be, having, having to give voice to these issues when others had the privilege of being silent. Likewise, I'm old enough to remember when women were only brought on to sports shows to talk about either women's sports or domestic violence or sexual assault. Mm. That wasn't yeah. that long ago, believe it or not, you know? And so the thing I do want to call out is and I know she was speaking to the people sitting before her, which I wish I could have had a reverse angle. But when Kim Mulkey said this language should offend you as women, no, it should offend all of us mm. should offend the yes. men. It offends me. It offends you, Michael. It should offend yep. all of us. 
And as long and, and just as just as white people have the responsibility of dismantling systemic racism, men bear the burden of dismantling misogyny and patriarchy. Women can't Amen. do it. If they if, if women could do Tell it, they'd have done it already. Woo. If women could do it by themselves, yep. it'd already be done. Okay, and so those conversations, these conversations cannot be the exclusive domain of women. Just as you know, as many have pointed out, women can't be the only consumers and, and, and enjoyers uh, and patrons and, uh, and, and fans of women's basketball. You know, the, that's, that's where the growth of, of that game comes in. So that would be the first thing is that it's offensive. It's universally offensive what this reporter did. The reason I said the LA Times is the, is the, is the real villain here. That shit should have never seen the light of day. Like if there isn't a full on internal audit of their editorial processes to where something like that could not only see the light of day, but then the Times got the nerve to publish in 2024. In 2024. Editor's note. Editor's note. The original version of this commentary did not meet Times editorial standards, you think? Oh, it has been edited to remove language that was inappropriate and offensive. We apologize to the LSU basketball program and to our readers. First of all, and if you read the updated version of the story, the premise remains. It's yeah. still the same premise. <laughs> it's like, yeah. no, it's like it's the same thing, just just more sanitized language involved. But it's the same hey. premise. But beyond that, yeah. man, like you yeah. ain't putting that toothpaste back in the tube. You're not, you're not un, un, un ringing that bell. That whistle has already been heard. So, like, what is their process where something like this could even see the light of day? It's, where some editor looked at this presumably and said, "Yep, good to go." Like, this is good. No editor yeah, that I have ever worked with. No editor, <laughs> exactly. Oh, spot on. <laughs> Nailed it. I think oh, about wow. the stuff. Love it. I think about the stuff Loved it. that that. Love your I think column. The stuff that Ken, that Ken Freitas. Used to change of mind. <laughs> Ken Freitas, Bob Duffy. How about Duff? Bob Duffy? Like these people, like, I mean, are just you taking like, it out? Who's and explain it later. Here? We're taking it out. We're just taking it out. Right. I'll explain we it to you. I ain't got we time. Asking you. We I ain't got time for your nonsense right now. Who let this see Lights light of day? Out. Who let this see light of day? And again, man, like, listen, I think there is room for criticism or for critique if you want of these athletes, but there's in bounds and there's out of bounds. And this was so clearly out of bounds. So and, clearly and by the way, the so egregious, I did. so extreme. Hey, come on. I took Kim Mulkey's advice and I did Google dirty debutantes. Bruh, come on. She's right. I'm a sucker for hey. I'm a sucker for alliteration. You know that. Hey, you know that's my love language you Google alliteration. It, but come on, my if guy. you Google it, like, it goes in a, it goes in a different direction. Let's just say that it goes precisely. in a different direction. Oh yeah, yeah, to say the least. To say the least. No, and I, it's, <laughs> I again, how that got published, is my biggest question. Everybody, whether it's whether it's you know Haley Van Lith, whether it's Kim Mulkey or any people have already said what needed to be said about this. I just would like to know where the real accountability beyond an editor's note and an attempt in 2024 at walking something back that everybody's already seen. I'd like to know where that where that accountability is or will be. Or are they just expecting that we'll just forget about it once we start watching the games tonight. Or and also um, listen, but and 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 I, I want you to get to uh, you know Malky in a second, but let me just say this. Did it not meet Times editorial standards? Or right, are they mad because the people Times got pissed and called them not on it? like being called out <laughs> by Kim Mulkey? Uh, I think it was probably like, more the latter. Would, it's probably more would the there latter. have been any? Was there? Would there? Was there any tension in the office? Was there any discussion? Did somebody say, "I told you, I told you, I I called him up, and then he 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 told me that hey, I got to run it. He had a tantrum, whatever it is." Was there anything that happened before yeah. Kim Mulkey? To, took the dais and said, hey, that was crazy. Did right. anybody have that conversation? 
And so if well, nobody well, had well, that conversation, well, who are the Yeah. Who well, are they? Who, what does any the news editor, look like? Well, what, but, but, okay, that's and it. this is an ongoing that's conversation in our business. What does the newsroom look like? What does the editorial that's board it. look like? Like, what, what are the what are the people on the copy desk? I say editorial board. I mean the copy desk. What are what are the people on the copy desk? What is that? What is that makeup? What are their perspectives? What are their backgrounds? What are their races? What are their genders? You know, like talk about diversity. It's like there's uh, there's there people people think of diversity in, in our business. Is they, they think about it on camera, you know what I mean? The powers that be, they think about it on camera. Off camera, man, do we have far to go. Behind yeah. the scenes, and so, in control what is rooms, the in meeting rooms, in boardrooms, what is the standard? G- What's great the question. Standard? Great question, because it, it didn't meet the standard. It met somebody, what was the pro- what, what's the standard and what's the process for making sure that it adhered to that standard? Because somebody laid eyes on that and said it was okay. Probably more than one somebody, and I would love to know who those people are, and I love answers from them because people know to report. That's the thing about you know you and I have been growing up in print, understanding how the process works, for better or worse, our name is on it. We wrote it; it's our words. We got to be held accountable for it. But there should be checks and balances, and should be safety nets that oftentimes protect us from ourselves. You know, that's right. Most of the so, time, most of the time yeah. it does happen. Yeah. So this this this. Even if even if this reporter actually thought this, there's an entire institution, a national paper, a supposedly respected paper, that should see to it that this never sees the light of day. They they have a they have an obligation to protect the sanctity and, and, and reputation of that paper by saying, "Hey man, take this shit somewhere else." You, you're like this is the L.A. Times, like you know, s- Save that for your group chat if you if 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 you must <laughs> express those types of sentiments. Right. If you must. Hey, thank you for watching, brother from another. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, go ahead and do that now. Don't forget you can catch us three to four weekdays on PeacockTV.com and on Sirius XM channel 85.